Well, it's not too late because, I mean, there's what NATO is doing is um, uh, reinforcing its own frontiers. This is what it does for alliance members, members of the alliance who have sworn by a defense treaty, which has been ratified by parliaments. There are 30 NATO members. It's unfortunate that Ukraine is not a NATO member. And so um, there, there, this isn't something that is kind of within NATO's uh, core mandate to do to protect Ukraine from uh, a Russian attack. So I think within that constraint, NATO is you know, working to do all that it can do. I personally would really uh, crank up the weapons that are being provided, if possible, the training that's being provided. And I would also hold at risk the one thing that Vladimir Putin most fears, and that is his own hold on power. So to me, something like a sustained information campaign that tells the Russian people every week about Vladimir Putin's corruption, about the billions he's stolen from the Russian state, about his many vacation houses, about his family's riches, about his cronies' riches. I think that is something that could be very effective in, um, in deterring Putin from taking these kinds of aggressive actions. Mm. Uh, when you look at future military tensions, what could it look like? Could it go beyond just a conventional warfare? Could we pile into a hybrid model where we're looking at cyber attacks? Could there be a nuclear standoff much later down the road? What could it look like? Yes, and so I think you've hit on what I think are some of the key elements. Uh, I think we're kind of now in a new era of European insecurity as of this week, unfortunately. It's sort of a move back towards the Cold War, Cold War but it'll be different. There'll be uh, conventional forces uh, if Russia takes Ukraine and stays in Belarus. There will be conventional forces of Russia and NATO you know, near each other across borders. That's number one. Number two, I think Russia will ramp up its so-called hybrid warfare operations, that is cyber attacks, uh, disinformation and propaganda, um, election meddling, uh, covert operations and intelligence activities. I think it'll ramp those up in the homelands of, um, of NATO and, and other democratic countries. And then third, um, there's a lot of nuclear saber rattling going on by Vladimir Putin. Um, there are, are nuclear capabilities uh, in NATO, the United States, France, the United Kingdom, but the modernization of those capabilities has really been lagging while Russia has been on a sustained modernization program for its nuclear weapons. So that needs to be turned up as well. Unfortunately, it goes against the Biden administration's initial uh, commitment to reduce the role of nuclear weapons in U.S. national security strategy. However, I think uh, it would be, uh, you know, supported by both parties in Congress if President Biden said, look, uh, I'm going to reassess that. Uh, we are in now new circumstances, and so we really do need to strengthen and accelerate the United States nuclear modernization program.